With the academy and the brain set up how we'd like them, it's time to turn our attention to perhaps the most important aspect of the training process, the agent itself. We can find our agent game object within the area game object as a child. When we look at it, we find that it has attached a push agent basic component. And this component inherits from the agent class. By inheriting from the agent class, it gets a lot of properties that are specific to actually training the agent. The first one is the fact that we can now link a brain. By linking a brain, this means that we want to use that brain to make decisions for this agent. We can do this programmatically, but we can also link the brain by simply dragging and dropping the brain game object into the brain area right here. Next, we see that we have the ability to add and remove cameras. If we were interested in using cameras as observations for our agent, adding a camera is as simple as pressing add camera and dragging the camera over. We won't use a camera though, so I'll remove it here. Next is max steps. Max steps, like in the academy, corresponds to how many fixed updates we want to perform before we terminate this specific training episode. In this case, for this agent, it's going to be 5,000 steps. Next is Reset on Done. Reset on Done corresponds to whether or not we'd like the agent to, once it's set to Done, reset. Now, how is an agent set to Done and why? Agents are set to Done by calling either Done from within the C-sharp code or by having the agent reach its max steps. And we set agents to done to restart the training process for that agent in that episode and move on to a new episode. Next, we have on-demand decisions. Here we have it disabled, but if you checked on-demand decision, instead of having agents take decisions at a fixed frequency, we can have them pick when they need decisions. This is great for turn-based games, strategy games, and board games where agents might need to take turns and wait before making a decision. Lastly, there's the decision frequency, and this corresponds to how infrequently an agent should be making decisions. If we were to set this to one, that would mean that every step of the engine, we'd want our agents to make a decision. We set it here to five because making decisions that frequently isn't very helpful. Between any two steps of the engine, not a lot has changed. It's typically the case that decision frequency for most environments is between 3 and 10. With all of these components set up and our game objects set in the scene the way we'd like, it's time to now turn our attention to the code itself and look at how we've implemented the ML agent's specific functions.